Worley Place is leased to Essex Wildlife Trust as a nature reserve. The 16 acres of the old garden show how a once carefully tended area will rapidly become overgrown and revert to woodland. Worley Place was formerly the home of one of the most famous female gardeners, Miss Ellen Wilmot, who died in 1934. A keen horticulturist, she introduced many exotic plants to Worley and indeed to Britain generally. Some are still found on the reserve. Good afternoon again everyone. As you can see I'm joined by the very lovely Candice. Hello. And we are in Brentwood in Essex. So I work in this area, I won't say any more than that. And I've been past this place loads of times. And it's about time we explored it. This place in question is Worley Place. So it's the ruins of a massive palatial house and gardens owned by a Miss Ellen Wilmot who died in I think it was sort of like the, the mid 1930s 1934 thank you so we're uh, they've got like a like a, a trail that you can follow and you can look around all like the ruins of the gardens and the house lots to see here apparently it is haunted as well um, if you believe that sort of thing so yeah we're gonna have a wander around it's a very very lovely day it's about 20 to 25 degrees at the moment it's easter so happy easter everyone and yeah we thought let's get out really so make the most of this amazing weather and it's only april as well so we're gonna take you on a little tour of worley place show you all the little bits of history and there's lots of rare plants and stuff as well so if you're into gardening and stuff this is a video for you probably. Uh, if we get time, we'll stop for a little bite to eat. I've got a ration pack in the rucksack, of course. And a cider as well, actually. Talking of that, we've just stopped at the Thatcher's Arms pub, uh, just back there. Really nice pub, very busy. So anyways, enough talking. Let's get walking. The South Pond is all that remains of the medieval water point for Great Worley Village. The main coloniser is common reed, but yellow flag and marsh marigold are among other plants. The path from the car park across the meadows to the gates and on through the reserve was the drive to the house and before that the main road from Great Worley to Brentwood. The road was moved to its present position in 1866. The drive from the gate to the car park borders the East Meadow. This is one of the few sites in Britain where the early English crocus grows naturally. On the left is South Lodge, now not part of the reserve but where Ellen Wilmot's skillful alpine gardener lived for 30 of his 40 years employment with her. In late winter snowdrops of many varieties can be seen bordering the path. Beyond here on your right is a large lime tree that was blown down across the drive in the 1987 storm. Notice the large upended root plate and the vertical branches that have grown from the trunk. Near the top of the slope on the left is where the house stood until it was demolished in 1939. The turning circle is still visible. Opposite on the right a ha-ha borders the east meadow. The ditch and wall kept grazing cattle out of the garden without the need for a hedge which would have blocked the view.
Notice the remains of the coach house on the left. There is a barrier across the old drive here. Take the path up the slope and notice the old rockery with its winding sunken paths on both sides of you. In spring and summer the characteristic smell of onions at this point indicates ramsons or wild garlic which is well established. On the left are many garden plants such as the white, red or purple flowers of Corydalis. Several hearts tongue ferns are present. Large strap shaped leaves are those of meadow saffron and in the autumn after they have died back tall rosy mauve crocus like flowers appear sometimes called naked ladies. This plant is poisonous. This area was at one time overrun with bramble and bamboo but the hard working volunteers have now managed to keep them in check. The two trees of heaven growing each side of the path here are descendants of a huge old tree that once grew among the bamboo. The path leads through an archway of yew trees before crossing the old drive. On the left after a sharp bend are a gnarled red horse chestnut tree and several bushes of spotted laurel acuba. This was the main cold frame area of the garden. Following the removal of sycamores and ivy many attractive flowers appear each year. At the far end a large patch of periwinkle blooms from early spring to late summer. The artificial pond was a reservoir for watering the cold frames and greenhouses. Next is a group of greenhouses, the layout of which can be seen from the plan attached to the rail. One of these houses has a 1.5 meter deep pool which was probably for ornamental fish. Next to the nursery beds is a narrow half moon shaped pond and beyond it is a brick sided reservoir similar to the one at post 8. More hens nest here regularly. Nearby is an iron gate that was found in the reservoir and has been rehung on its original post. The fallen ivy covered stump on the right was a sycamore tree which lived for about 140 years. It was used as a nesting and roosting site by tawny owls until it fell down. On the opposite side of the path are nursery beds with brick edged paths between them. The walled garden probably dates from the 17th century. Much of what is here is the result of Miss Wilmot's planting. There is a fine ginkgo tree, a few magnolias and two palms. Smaller plants to look for include Solomon's seal, comfrey and Welsh poppy. There is also an, an information room that you can visit.
The conservatory was part of the house and it still stands. It was stabilised in 2006 and can now be entered from all four directions. The large window looks out over what was the lawn and bowling green. The house was demolished in 1939 and much of the ground floor has fallen into the cellars. The small building, now used as a volunteers room, was a cloakroom and toilet. From outside the far door of this room, one can see the white glazed bricks of the kitchen which was below the butler's and housekeeper's rooms. Several different ferns flourish in the cellars. Welcome back. We're sat in what was uh, the conservatory of the house here at Worley Place and a little bit peckish so it's time for a little ration pack. This one is menu 20. It's hash brown potatoes with bacon, peppers and onions. So it's a, it's a breakfast menu this one but it's always a good time of day to eat breakfast, it doesn't matter. So. We have got, right off the bat, we've got some Mountain House dehydrated granola with milk and blueberries. That sounds quite tasty. Uh, the accessory pack. Uh, it's got orange type 3 beverage powder. It's got the awful genial coffee. Uh, there's a wet wipe there. Sugar. Non-dairy creamer salt as usual which I never use, matches, the bog roll, there's no toilets in here, it's not good, and uh, cinnamon flavoured chewing gum, then I added a galaxy hot chocolate, yeah. Candice's eyes lit up at that, oh, I'm not that a spoon, then we have the main meal itself, hash brown potatoes with bacon, peppers and onions. And we've got some jalapeno cashews. I've heard good things about those, so I'm looking forward to them. We've got some crackers, standard crackers. FRH, which we'll probably need to have here because well, I've got a little solid fuel stove, but I probably shouldn't really be lighting that here. So we've got concrete round us, so it's not like we're going to set fire to anything, but still. Uh, beverage bag for mixing up your hot drinks, although I'll probably put the cold in it. Uh, the cardboard sleeve. Cheese spread. Yes. Love it. And a cinnamon bun. Lovely jubbly. Anyways, you know what I'm going to say. Enough yakking. Let's get snacking! Well I've pretty much made all the components of the MRE up. We're just waiting on the main meal, the hash browns, potatoes with bacon, peppers and onions to finish cooking. So that's the, uh, the outcome of the orange beverage base drink. And we've got our hot chocolate and coffee. I think that's called an army mocha, something like that and I'm just sort of waiting for the the granola with milk and blueberries to sort of soak a bit so I, I think I've put the right amount in it anyway it smells and looks really good that I'm looking forward to it um, so we'll get this in a bottle first and then we'll crack on with with the sides the stuff that's cold that's easiest to eat first and we'll try that out Yep, the orange beverage base powder is pretty much the same as the other ones I've had. 
the, uh, the hot drink's going to be too hot at a moment. Let's have a look at the jalapeno cashews. See if we get a hiss. Oh, we got a little hiss. Banging. <laughs> Getting seeds, you don't get loads of them. Oh, they smell really strong. There you go. Can you try some of these? Go on. There you go. Oh, yeah, they're hot. <laughs> they're really hot, but they are really nice. Oh, wow. Full of flavour. You can't really tell if they're cashews though because the, the jalapeno is just so overpowering but I like them. Mm. Almost like a palate cleanser. Mm. Do you want some more of them? Um, I don't know. That's a good start. Oh, you definitely need the drinks. Um, the hot and the cold drinks with those. Um, next thing we're going to have a look at is this cinnamon bun. don't know if I should have put this in the FRH as well, but let's try it out anyway. No hiss. I think this is kind of like the cinnamon buns you get in the, the British Army 24 hour ration packs. And yeah, it is pretty much exactly the same. Let's get rid of the oxygen absorber. This one feels really soft and Lovely. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's just like the British Army ones. I love these things. Absolutely brilliant. Do you want to try a bit? Oh. Go on. Really, really good. Considering this is like shelf stable, you know, I know it's full of preservatives and stuff. They are so good. Full of flavour. Oh really soft, they're good, aren't they? They are amazing, aren't they? <laughs> mm. Wow. That's certainly a winner. Okay, next thing we're going to have is the plain crackers, and we're going to have the cheese spread with it as well. Which Candice has got. My glamorous assistant. <laughs> okay, let's see if we get a hiss. Yes, you hear that hiss? Nice. I just thought I'd just nicked his catchphrase. Mm. You know what I'm talking about. Right, they've stayed in fairly decent nick. I mean, I haven't had this ration pack that long, really. It came through the post literally the other day, so it should be alright. Yeah, not too bad. They've uh, oh, stayed in fairly good nick. Okay. Do you want one each? I'm not going to have cheese. Oh, you don't want cheese? Alright, okay. Disgusting. I have to do this off camera because I haven't got a tray. You know my fault about that. Candice hates this cheese. I think it's amazing. You know, Hardy liked it as well when I went camping with him. He likes an MRE, mm. and uh, and he said it's, it's salty, but it's really nice. I was mm. like, good. Mm. I agree with you. Do you like the one with the um, jalapeno peppers or something? Yeah, there's a cheese with jalapeno peppers. That's really good. Mm. Um, and they do a peanut butter with chocolate in it that I had. Yeah. That was good. Um, they do a crunchy peanut butter. That's that's okay, to be honest with you, I like all of them. There's mm. not one that I dislike. There we go. Ooh. Right, so... Don't really know if we're going to be able to spread this. Doesn't really spread. But, there we go. It's basically the same as it's always been. So
salty, quite buttery sort of cheese spread with quite dry, dry uh, crackers but I like it all the same, it's good. Yeah, um, next thing we'll probably have to try out the granola, uh, the hot chocolate and the coffee. It's not earth shattering, it's exactly the same as I've had before. But I like it, that's probably because it's got a galaxy hot chocolate in it, which wasn't in the ration pack. Mm. So, let's have a little look at the granola, which, I don't know if you're going to be able to see in it, I haven't got a tray to put it on or anything, but... No, it's probably, I'm probably going to spill it if I try and tip it up too much. Just about. Tell you what. My spoon's covered in cheese, but oh well. Here we go. I'll show you. It's a very vibrant blue colour. Oh God. Loads of blueberries. You get tons of blueberries. Probably more than you do like oats, really. Right. Let's give this a try. Do you know, that's really good. And that's really good granola. And it, I've let it soak just just the right amount. Let's try some more berries in it. That is unbelievably good. It's very sweet. So it's probably got sugar and God knows what in it, but that's tasty. So far, so this is probably one of the best USMREs I've had. <clears throat> it's certainly the best breakfast one I've had so far of any ration pack. Um, really, really full of flavour. Mm. Okay, we've uh, put the, the main on the stove just to boil it through a bit more. And it's piping hot now how we want it the smell is amazing coming out of there I'll just show you there we go look at that loads of stuff going on can you smell that from here it it smells good then yes. <laughs> give it a little stir <clears throat> so this is hash brown what was it again Hash brown bacon onions. Oh, hash, hash brown potatoes with bacon, peppers and onions, that's it. Um, you have this more than I do. So um, I'm not I don't usually have a cooked breakfast. Oh, it's really hot. Ah. This is where the cardboard sleeve comes in handy, but I've opened it from the wrong end and really ah oh, there we go. Right. I'll give it the first test. We've got loads of stuff going on there. But there's a lot of flavours in there. What I've got a strong uh, strong taste of pepper and onion. That's the main flavours that I'm getting. Hardly any bacon. Well, not yet anyway. Um, we'll probably have to let this cool down a little bit longer. Well, there's a bit of potato there. A tiny little square on the end. Mm. Yeah, it's not bad that. I mean, I don't know if I could have maybe used the crackers in it or something else. It it, it feels like it, it needs something else, like it needs to be used with one of the sides, but for the life of me I can't think what, but no, it's good. Mm. It's very filling on a on a winter day that would be absolutely brilliant. Um, right now it's, it's just starting to get a little bit cooler but not too much the wasps are attacking <laughs> candies um, but yeah overall good little mame um, it's, it's been a really good ration pack overall this I would say it's definitely the best breakfast menu I've had and yeah it's one of the better US ones as well although there's quite a few of them that I like so yeah that has been US MRE menu 20 hash brown potatoes with bacon, peppers and onions. We're going to finish this off and then we'll get cracking with the rest of the walk.
Both. Both. Yeah, wow. Look at that down there. We'll now follow the path along the remains of the herbaceous boulder beside the restored south wall of the walled garden. From the terrace, mostly restored from its previous dilapidated state, there was in Ellen Wilmot's day a clearer view of the lakes at the bottom of the slope than there is now. If you follow the higher or lower path here and continue down the slope, which affords a good view of the daffodil bank. Bluebells can be seen on both sides of the path and there is a very large turkey oak. One of its branches has a witch's broom, a growth caused by a fungus. In spring the bank produces a beautiful display of daffodils followed by rose bay, willow herb later in the year. Halfway down on the right is a large tree, a Caucasian wingnut. The lower tree covered area was the bog garden and a concrete edged boating lake. The lake floor now hardly shows so much as a puddle, even in the wettest weather. On the right of the path is the massive earth bank erected by Miss Wilmot to retain the lake. At the far end of the lake where the path turns to the left, the rail on which the boats were moored can still be seen. This hide overlooks the North Pond which is reputed to have been a carp pond when the estate belonged to the nuns of Barking Abbey. Plants here include purple loose strife, yellow iris, club rush, great reed mace and common reed. Nut hatches and tree creepers are among the many birds to be seen. The Spanish or sweet chestnuts were reputed to have been planted by the diarist John Evelyn in the 17th century, but although Evelyn owned part of the manor of Great Worley for six years, he never lived at Worley Place. In spring, the small clearmen daffodil grows beneath the chestnuts. The view over London on a clear day is magnificent. St Paul's Cathedral, the London Eye, the Shard, Canary Wharf and the O2 Arena can all be seen. The large beech tree on the left was planted in around 1810. It was originally pollarded but it grew out to such a height 
but the top had to be cut off to render it safe. Just before the bridge, a spur path leads to a hide overlooking South Pond. Alongside this path in late spring, patches of purple toothwort can be seen. It is an introduced parasitic plant with no leaves, gaining nourishment by suckers which penetrate the roots of surrounding trees. Ah, oh, he's just gone in. There's a badger come out of there. No way. That is amazing. Badger sits. The bridge spans the gorge, which Miss Wilmot had excavated as part of her alpine garden. Water flowed through it from a pond at the top down into the south pond below. All the rocks were brought from Yorkshire by the company which did the work. The path leads down some steps to join the old drive and this completes the circular tour of the reserve. Well, we're back at the entrance of the main path here at Worley Place and we've finished having a look round the amazing grounds and the ruins of the, the old house here. Never ever knew there was this much stuff here and it was right on my doorstep as well. It's been absolutely brilliant. This is quite a memorable little explore we've had. Good ration pack as well. The weather's been fabulous it's only just starting to get a bit chilly now as the, the sun sort of literally just set I think it's what seven o'clock half seven yeah. it's nearly eight o'clock yeah and this is April and you know it's still kind of light like this which is a good sign it means summer's on its way I cannot wait yeah absolutely brilliant day out we've had and it hasn't cost us anything and we've spent probably three four hours in there having a look around i know we spent an hour sort of sitting having the ration pack but and it didn't cost us anything it's pretty cool and yeah we also saw a badger as well it poked its head out of one of the sets that was near the cave where the bridge was and yeah that was that was quite something didn't get a chance to photograph it though i'm afraid because it literally it, it saw us and then shot back in but it was there for a good few seconds <laughs> Pretty cool. Anyways, I want to say a big thank you to the lovely Candice for joining me. It's been good fun again for you. And thank you at home for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I really do recommend coming here. It yeah. is amazing. Um, get in the comments, let us know what you think. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for your support as always. It means a hell of a lot. Until next time. Take care of yourselves, look after each other, stay safe, but above all else, get out there and explore. Cheers for watching everyone, see you again soon. Bye bye. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh! Where did that bit out? Oh! Is that hot? Yeah, that's really hot that. Um, like, really hot. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and we did see a badger as well. It just poked its hole out of... Poked its hole? <laughs>
Cut that out.